Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kept Tech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Um, happy Sunday. And today we're going to go over um, which is called course number three. Um, if, you got, if you guys follow me along, there's a playlist I have. It's called course one, course two. Course three is, I'm going to make this right now. And basically I cover all about customer service, how to deal with people, how to talk to people, and also how to write emails if you're responding to users or people that are having IT issues. So if you're new to my channel, do IT videos and that stuff support videos so about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live. I greatly appreciate it. And um, let's go over it. So I'll sh I'm going to share my screen with you right now and we'll, we'll take a look together, all right? As a, as an IT professional, you need, to, you need to know and understand how to deal with people because um, whether you work uh, help desk or IT support, you're always going to deal with people no matter what. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. This is course number three, and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about, okay? Just give me a second, so share screen number one. Um, it's called uh, Half of the Tech. So this is understanding customer service. Um, customer service is having empathy for the customer. For example, I'm sorry to hear that. Please let me know, please let me help you. I'm sorry you're having that issue. Let's work together to resolve it. Follow up with the user. Don't lie to the client. Don't get too technical because a lot of them do not like it when you get too technical. Um, don't act like you know everything because no one knows everything. Resolve the issue a hundred percent. So, so this doesn't go to someone else. So what does that mean? That means that you actually take the time to actually resolve the issue and then the ticket doesn't get reopened again. So in, in, in real life, or, you know, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So in real life, you will have a bunch of tickets, any type of tickets so like this one's called test. And basically you want to make sure that I'm just going to save it. Uh, you want to make sure that as a as a technician or a tech person, you want to make sure that you fully close the ticket to the best of your ability. That way, the user does not open the ticket again. You want to follow up with you want to follow up with the user, but also on top of that, uh, you want to make sure that you fully resolve the issue and that you actually um, you know follow up with the user and you don't close the ticket on the fly because a lot a lot of these pe a lot of people that I know or just people that are new to IT they close the ticket thinking that they fully resolved the issue when they didn't. So you want to make sure that you fully resolve the issue. You follow up with the user as much as you can and don't just close tickets because of numbers. There's nothing. So this is not a, um, this is not a race. And also this is not a, a, a um, like basically a, a contest where who closes the most tickets. There's nothing to do with that. It's more about being professional, um, taking your time with the tickets, uh, asking for help and also following up with the user. That makes sense. So, um, you know, and the other thing is resolve, uh, behave professionally, don't make negative comments, don't threaten people, I've seen people do that in IT. Don't threaten someone just because you have IT authority doesn't mean you could disable someone's account or lock their account or whatever, don't, that doesn't mean anything. Just remember that you're an employee just like them, so you get fired or let go if anything, that could happen to you as well. So just remember that. Remember the client is upset at the computer, all, the, all their software, not at you, don't take it personal, they are not trying to attack you. Um, as you should not be attacking them either. So make sure that, that you have patience, you have um, courtesy, you, you, you're empathetic, and you have respect for the, for, for the person you're working with because a lot of these people are upset at the technology, not at you. So just don't, don't, don't take it to heart and also be professional about it. Learn, learn, learn and grow as a professional. And all they care about that it's working and that's fixed. That's all they care about. So that's basically it. So let's look at uh, some examples of IT support or, or help desk or how do you troubleshoot IT support. Just just some some like small examples, if that makes sense. And I'll share what that with you right now, okay? Let me uh, let me fix that for you. I'll, I'll have a look and, and see what's going on, okay? So at this point, when you're when you're dealing with a customer or you're dealing with someone, you need to figure out what's locking them out. So a lot of companies use um, different types of tools and programs. Uh, I use account lockout status. You could use that, it's absolutely free, but your, your company has to allow or approve it, obviously. So you wanna figure out what's going on with their account. So what you do is you go into Active Directory, you unlock the account, and then they should be good to go after that. Yes, hi, hello, yeah, can you please try again? Let me know if you're able to get in on your on your computer now. It's working now? All right, awesome. I hope you have a great day. So that's an example of an issue that you, you resolve for someone. Um, 
Obviously, you check Active Directory. Just make sure that their account isn't locked out. It's probably locked off for some weird reason. Maybe they changed their password recently. You don't know. Maybe they forgot to change their password on their phone. They changed it on their computer, but not on their phone. So they have to update their password everywhere for it to sync. Otherwise, it keeps locking them out. So that's just an example. Another example of this would be if someone's having an issue with Outlook and they, their Outlook keeps crashing. Obviously, you wanna you wanna do what you wanna troubleshoot. You wanna get it onto their computer. So you will use remote tools like Bomgar or SSEM or Ivanti. Once you get on their, on their computer, you're able to navigate and actually troubleshoot the issue. So what you do is, you, 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 when, you, when you, someone's having an issue, they put a ticket in request, right? Outlook issue, right? Yeah, hey, uh, hey uh, good morning, Tom, how you doing? Uh, this is Kevin, uh, I'm following up on that ticket that you, 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 you put and submitted. The ticket was about Outlook. Are, are you still having that issue? Are you still having that issue? Okay. I'm gonna do a screen share with you. Let me know if you can get on your computer right now. Is right now a good time to do this? It is? Okay, good. So you wanna follow up with the user, you wanna ask them, you wanna ask them if right now is a good time to do it. Because a lot, of, you gotta keep in mind that um, they have their time as well. So you wanna make sure that you do it when they have time to do it because they have meetings they go to, they have conference calls that they do, they have a lot of different things that they do. So you wanna keep in mind of their time. Their time is, you know, their, their schedule is different from your schedule. So you wanna make sure you have an open schedule for both of you, him or her, whoever it is, and make sure the schedule is open for both of you so you can actually look at the issue because you don't know he's probably going for lunch or she's going for lunch or, or she's going to a meeting or he's going to a meeting, he's having a Zoom meeting or something, you don't know that. So you want to be accountable for the person's time because they have their own schedule that they're following so just remember that so for outlook obviously you will recreate the uh, outlook profile um for outlook you, you that's like the last thing you want to do is recreate the outlook profile you just want to check to see if there's any add-ins that are probably causing it to crash so you would open up outlook in safe mode that would be your best bet and if it's not crashing after that you might want you may want to just see what add-in is causing it so you do process of elimination you want to check the add-ins and you see which one's causing it to crash. And then that's it. That's pretty much it. So it's just some basic stuff. You know, you, you, you have a user, you're working with him or her, and you try to figure out to the best of your ability. And another, another example of this is if someone's having an issue with Excel um, and the Excel keeps crashing, same thing, you open up Excel in safe mode and you get on their, on their computer and you want to make sure that there's no add-ins interrupting it or causing it to crash, if that makes sense, okay? So that's it, that's pretty much it. It's just a simple video, nothing, nothing crazy, just showing you how to troubleshoot and, and, and actually talk to a user because a lot of people do not know how to talk to people and a lot of people don't know how to get out of their comfort zone, if that makes sense. So you have, you, you're probably uncomfortable or you probably don't know what to say to a user or someone, so you might wanna you know, learn how to do that because a lot of these people, um, they, they, you don't know how to talk to them. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a customer, it's a client, so no matter what, you have to know how to talk to a user. So that's super duper important, okay? Yeah, so as a, as a, as a person in networks, uh, IT, help desk, desktop support, technical support, you have to know how to construct and formulate emails. So I'm gonna go over that real quick and show you how you should write your emails if you're sending an email to a client or a user. So let me share my screen with you and just show you. So I'm gonna open up my Outlook and just show you what you would do. So basically when you have Outlook open, usually you have your email and you, you'll have, you'll have, um, you have your tickets as well, so you either you can either um, update the update the email or update the issue through the ticketing system. So like this one, like I created this test one, like we we talked about today, or you can email the user and just put the incident ticket number. So it would be something like this. So you would literally put it in here and reply to them here, and or you have the other option where you can actually go into Outlook and send them an email. So. Obviously, you, you look for the user, whoever it is, you add them here. And once you do that, you will say something like, good morning, um, I'm following I'm following up on an issue. Um, I'm following up on that issue for Outlook. Are you still having that issue? Or are you still having that issue? And then you would, you would put regards your name or regards the signature and obviously the first email is going to be your signature um, after that don't worry about after that don't worry about your signature so it was, you're always going to do good morning good afternoon good evening they love it when you do that and obviously you put the title of, of whatever it is so you put outlook issue 
Uh, you email the person, whatever, whatever their email address is, you know. So, like me, it's kapolnorio63 at gmail.com to check for names. And then you put all oh, the issue, and then you, you say good morning or good afternoon, whoever the person is. You say good morning, Kyle, or whatever. So, you would, you would say, I'm just following up on incident ticket num ticket zero 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 four are are you still having this issue and then that that's another that's how you write email another email would be like uh what time uh when will be a good time to look at this issue please let me know and then obviously when you when you when you when they give you a time and you put regards your name when they give you a time, you literally like what I do is as a, as a, I don't know if you guys do this, but as me, like I literally will go into my outlook. I literally would create a new calendar and I would, I would put like a, a Kyle outlook issue and then I'll, I send it to myself and then I book that, that day and that time with whatever, you know, as a, as for 30 minutes of me troubleshooting that issue, I'll put like, I'll put it on my calendar so I don't forget. That's basically what I do or I update it on the ticket. So I will literally, I would literally go to the ticket, um, which is right over here, and I literally will put it on the ticket. Like I would literally like like uh, put a note on the ticket. I add a note. Uh, he said he can troubleshoot this at 1 p.m. today. So like that, like you would just literally put something there and you know, add as a private note, and then you know that you have to go and look at that ticket or fix that issue from later on today. If that makes sense. So. The right way to write an email is when you say, when would be a good time to look at this issue? Please let me know. Or, or the other one is like when you, when you, the other email, so these are the simple emails you will write. Another email that you would, you would, you would literally write to someone is, I'm just, I'm just following up on this ticket. Are you, are you still having this issue? They say, they say, they reply back to you and they say, uh, no, we're good. And it's like, okay, is it, is it okay to close the ticket? Just so wanna make sure you get the approval. And what you do is you, when you don't send the email, you copy and paste the whole email, right? And literally what you do is you put it in the notes. You put add a note and then you save it. So whatever you send, you save it in there. That's that's how I do my tickets. I don't know how you guys do it, but everyone does it differently. I like to be very organized. Um, as far as writing is concerned, just key points. Don't write capital letters like this, like capital T, TV, whatever. That's very aggressive. If you write capital letters, that they're, they're gonna think you're pissed off or something. So don't don't write capital letters with capital letters or capital sentences because they think you're 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 pissed off. And there, there's, a, there's a you have to have proper etiquette when it comes to writing because a lot of these people they think that it, it may seem very aggressive. So don't don't be aggressive with your email. So you say good morning, good afternoon. I'm just following up on your issue. You're still having this issue. Let me know if you're still having this issue. And then. You know, different types of emails, but usually you, you want to do, um, typically you want to do good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, I hope you're doing well, um, how was your, I hope you're having a good week, or happy Monday, and then basically you just con construct that email, and then you send it over to them, and that's it. That's basically, it's a basic, uh, basic way of sending emails. I hope this video helps you out, and I hope you guys, I hope you guys have a great day, alright? Take care. Peace. Later.